Hello and welcome once again to the Safe Living Technologies RF anechoic chamber here at 9CI. In this video, I'd like to discuss the reality of RF testing or the testing of consumer RF meters. I wish I didn't have to make this video, but recently we were made aware of a video and it joins a number of videos that are out there on YouTube, for example, that are showing RF meter is being tested and compared in highly uncontrolled environments. And what's really concerning is that the amount of people that are taking these tests seriously and thinking they are legitimate. And also concerning is that going forward, more people seeing these, that, these kinds of videos will assume that, um, that these tests are, are valid. So I would like to, uh, without getting too technical, just uh, illustrate what's actually necessary to test meters properly, accurately, okay? For detailed information on these procedures and background, I invite you to look at two videos that I made before. I'll have the links down below. Uh, one of them is called The Reality of RF Meters, and the other is The RF Testing Standard. So look at those videos if you want to take a deep dive into the things that I'm talking about. But right now, to address the question, what is real valid RF testing? Well, four things need to happen. Number one, you need to have the tests happen in a controlled environment. And when I say, say controlled environment, the reason for that is to eliminate other signals, such as Wi-Fi routers and beacons and things like that, or cell phone towers. You have to eliminate all those external noises and influences that can alter or disturb the test data. So in this case, a controlled environment, I'm sitting in an anechoic, RF anechoic chamber. Anechoic, what does that mean? No reflections. In this space, the floor, the walls, and the ceilings, ceiling, there's only one ceiling, are covered in special RF absorbing tiles. Here's one of these tiles. Okay. Um, they are, each one of these tiles is about uh, 250 or $300. Imagine the cost of surfacing an entire space, especially a larger space with these special tiles. Why do you want them? Because when you're sending RF in a room like this, you do not want reflections. As many of you know, when you're walking around with whatever RF meter that you have, walking around your home, you're gonna see drastic changes in levels depending on the position. Why is that? It's called destructive and constructive interference. These are the results of reflections, RF bouncing off of, of uh, metal, different spaces, different, uh, different materials in your home and creating this kind of interference which skews the meter readings. What, what, what reading do you take, over here or over here? In an anechoic chamber, that doesn't happen because when RF from a transmitter gets sent in this direction, it gets absorbed into those tiles. Okay, when this door is closed in this RF chamber, no RF gets in and no RF gets out. Okay, uh, think of an RF chamber essentially as a Faraday cage. Okay, you can look that up and, and having these tiles on it so that it's fully anechoic. Okay, so RF just disappears into the void of the tiles here. Okay, so that's the first thing, controlled environment, so that your readings aren't skewed by other, other sources of RF. The second thing, of course, you need is a way to generate RF at known frequencies and known power levels. A signal generator, okay? Now, many people have signal generators, and just because you have a signal generator doesn't mean you can automatically start doing testing or valid RF testing. That's just one portion of what's necessary to do real RF testing. So signal generators, okay, many are available, um, but the signal generator needs to be calibrated. What does that mean? The power output and the frequency stability of that signal generator needs to be referenced with something that is actually real. In other words, what's the point of having a piece of test equipment without knowing that the piece of test equipment has been set to a certain standard, right? Okay, so that's what I'm saying when I, when I say, that's what I mean when I'm saying calibrated. So you have, you need a signal generator, a way to generate 
known RF powers at certain frequencies. Okay, so you've got the signal generator. How do you get the RF from the signal generator into a space? How do you, how do you get that uh, broadcasting or sending this, this uh, RF signal into a space where the, uh, the device that you're testing, the RF meter, can hear it, can receive that? Well, you need antennas. Okay, and an antenna is not some uh, oven baking tray, for example. Behind me are a few of our antennas that we use. These are lab calibrated antennas. Okay, they're very expensive, thousands of dollars. Each antenna that we get comes with lab testing data. Okay, each antenna is actually tested in a calibrated environment with known calibrated equipment to a certain to a standard so that at each frequency we can look and be like okay so um, this particular antenna here um, at uh, 22 gigahertz um, has a, a gain of 11.7 dBi okay I'm not going to get technical but that means something we need this accurate information when we're doing testing so that when we send power from a signal generator into a space that we know exactly what kind of power is being generated okay so again there are various different kinds of antennas larger antennas for lower frequencies smaller antennas for higher frequencies this is a small little antenna look at the size of my hand this particular antenna covers uh, the range of 18 to 40 gigahertz okay very expensive antenna for for its size you wouldn't think so but you know five thousand dollars sitting there okay so that's the that's the third thing the, uh, the calibrated antennas the fourth thing is a way to actually measure power okay because you're using rf meters that you're testing and they're they're supposedly measuring rf power but but their calibration standard in many cases is unknown. As a matter of fact, most manufacturers of RF, consumer RF meters out there make certain claims about their frequency response, but they're not true. And I dig into that in that video that I told you about the reality of RF meters. So you need a way to measure RF power, okay? So that can be an RF power sensor or a spectrum analyzer. Again, either of those devices have to be calibrated. They need to be tested with a known uh, piece of test equipment that's been actually uh, verified that its readings are true, okay? Um, just as a side note, these antennas, this, uh, the calibration certificates that come with these antennas are valid for only one year or possibly two years. After that period of time, these antennas need to be sent to an RF testing lab to get recalibrated Okay, so nothing physical might change on the antennas, but what happens is that there's a new plot generated and a new uh, graph that shows the updated values of what this antenna is actually doing. Because things can change over time, especially millimeter wave antennas. Um, the tolerances are so precise that if, if, if something gets banged or dented or something like that, that can radically change the performance. So what does this mean? In summary, you need to have all these four things all working together to create accurate, reliable, real test data, okay? And uh, just because you own a signal generator and uh, stick some meters in, a, in an aluminum baking tray, uh, that's a little bit different than an RF anechoic chamber, antennas, power sensors, signal generators that are all calibrated. I hope this helps clear up some questions and gives you some good information to know going forward. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.